Okay, so what you're about to watch is a video that I was working on in 2021. Editing around August, I think I filmed it in Easter or maybe February half term. Uh, it was from a small trip I made to uh, Felixstowe and I was looking at the arcades there. The problem was I didn't film enough footage and as a result I had to abandon the video simply because I couldn't finish editing it. However, I figured enough of it was edited that someone might find it interesting to watch a bit of it, even though a lot of it's unedited and unpolished. So, without further ado, uh, here's the video. So the first place I visited was uh, Manning's Amusements. This place was actually listed on Xenius Ivanisher, and uh, <laughs> the listing wasn't accurate at all. It was a good listing, like there's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, it all gone by this point, I assume it, the games have been scrapped or whatever. But, you know, that, uh, there's still some stuff left, it's not just like penny pushes and take redemption. They did have a DDR cab, but you know, Dancing Stage, Euromix 1, Grumble Grumble. Although, one thing that was kind of cool is that this isn't just normal Euromix, this is Euromix internet ranking. It says like on the marquee, it's like, wow, Sig's whole new songs. It's like, it's it's got some of the iconic DDR Dance Mania licenses and like, I think it might have one or two more Konami originals. Euromix 2, still way better. Don't know why none of the places can be bothered to upgrade their cabs at all. But then again, this place couldn't even be bothered to freaking service them because half the time I stepped on a panel and it just was like, nah, mate. You like, you had to step really hard and it got worse the more I played. Although looking back at the footage, half the time it just sort of looks like I'm missing the panel. So, eh, but yeah, didn't didn't play too well, but. And got some good stuff out of it. One really nice feature about this cab that you don't see a lot with even old DDR cabs, really generous credit prices. So one pound gives you free credits in game, whereas normally it's one pound one credit or 50 pence one credit. But this was like, no, free whole credits for one pound. That, that's, that's pretty good. I did do the course mode actually, non-stop, whatever it's called, and uh, got on the high scoreboard because I don't think anyone had ever tried it, but the way you went high scores in that game, it's freaking dumb. I, I got M and A in, but then it wrapped past D, and it's like, oh, frick, I, 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 the timer ran out. <laughs> so I just got M A dot. But hey, it's there. One other cool thing that they had there, uh, pinball. I don't normally do pinball because there's not normally machines near me that I can play on, and it's just sort of not really been on my radar. But you know, this place had them. And it's like pinball's cool. Some people like pinball. Some people are into it. So I was like, yeah, why not? Let's give it a go. They had like newer cabs which I think were from Stern Pinball and it's like you, you could tell they were new because like instead of just like those old dot matrix stickers they had screens and then like Butter Guardians of the Galaxy one. I played the Star Wars one. It's really cool stuff because there's like screens that show up and there's like little mini games you can play where it's like avoid the asteroids you're piloting the, the thing and then you like use the flipper buttons to like play the game and it's 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 really cool stuff although I'm not very good at pinball <laughs> I'm I'm not very good at all uh, I used to be better I think like there used to be a retro game shop in Waterford that had the Spider-Man pinball and I, I, I had some fun with that the shop shut down I haven't touched pinball in ages so I wasn't very good my dad who was with me at the time I was just like, hey, do you want to play? He, 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 had a, he had some fun playing. He got on the friggin' high scoreboard and everything. He was much better than me. And I think it even gave him, like, a free credit. Once you got on the high scoreboard, it's like, hey, here's an extra game for free. Which was, yeah, that, that was pretty swell. Last thing there of interest, ignoring Pac-Man Ticket Mania, because, you know, it's Pac-Man, it's a video game. But yeah, uh, last main thing of interest is Tank Tank Tank. It's a stupid name to pronounce, but on paper it's fine, I guess. It's like... Very casual, very like tourist friendly. You go around in tanks and there's like a free for all death match, there's a team death match, there's like a co op player versus big boss, whatever mode. But I found it really fun. It's not exactly, you know, the deepest game, it's not exactly a rhythm game or something like that. It's, it's just fun though. The cab's really neat because it's like using the seats that you more associate with Western cabs, it's like the, the same seat molds as my Need for Speed cab actually, but when you shoot, the seat just like woof, moves back with the recoil. That, that was a really fun touch, and the game's like got vertical screens, which is kind of weird, but hey, and it has like the Nam cam, the, the same stuff as Mario Kart, and that, that was kind of cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very fun game. Playing it with friends or like four players would probably be very fun. Yeah, if I saw it again in the world, I'd totally play it. It's worth noting, before I go on to the next place, there were other arcades, but like, <laughs> two or three in a row, I went into them, and it's just like, 
Do you want incountable amounts of penny pushes and a couple of gambling games and like ticket stuff? Great, here you go. There's one place that had Mario Karts, it had a twin and then a sing. it's like a free player setup. That's it. I saw like one or two arcades like this at Great Yarmouth as well. Just no video games other than like one Mario Kart because they probably bought it like eight years ago and it's just still making money because Mario Kart's like that. Oh well. Another place with free Mario Karts was like the pier area, which I believe had actually been redone recently. So instead of like the other places which had like older ticket redemption stuff and like lots of penny pushes, this place was like lots of new caps. It sort of almost reminds me of like looking at tours of like round one or Dave and Buster's locations. Really big, lots of ticket stuff everywhere. Lots of redemption, videmption, all that stuff. There was even some of the Andamiro pushes, like uh, DC superheroes. It's, it's kind of cool stuff. I don't normally indulge in Redemption a whole lot, but I do have a soft spot for some of them. Some Videmption games by Raw Thrills are pretty good, and also, like, I do like the Andamiro pushes. There's a SpongeBob one in my local bowling place. I really like that one, and I, you know, that kind of stuff. To see it here, not in a chain, just a one off peer location, it's pretty cool to see them staying current and all. And their game selection was also pretty current. They had Mario Kart, as I previously mentioned, again in free players for some reason. They had like a photo booth, you know. They had Superbikes Free, which eh, it's not. I've played it once before. It's like Cruising Blast, but with even simpler tracks, and there's no saving them, whatever. And you know, it's, it's like once you finish, it acts like you get a free game, but you don't. And it's, eh. What's really strange is, you know, you have Superbikes Free, motorbike game, whatever, but then you turn around, uh, <laughs> they have a different motorbike game Ultra Moto VR. Only half of it was turned on when I was there, presumably COVID social distancing measures, maybe. The other half was broken. I don't know. But yeah, the game was really fun. It's like a VR motorbike game. That's pretty obvious. Hey, so uh, uh, this is <laughs> very sloppy edit from ages later. Basically, uh, I spent way too much time talking about this one VR motorbike arcade game that cost way too much per credit. Uh, and uh, I didn't actually record enough video at the time. I have like two clips and I can't be bothered to reuse them and source other stuff uh, to do deal with my rambling. So instead I'm going to very quickly sum up my feelings of the game here where I've got video. Uh, this video this video itself is already very, very late. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go talk about the feature set. Uh, it has actual gameplay, you know, there is traffic to weave around, there is corners that you have to drift tightly around. Is inexplicable reason the game lets you save your progress. You can link it to a Facebook account and save it online, which I noted was very similar to Speed Driver 5, another game which does a very similar thing, although that rips off the gameplay of Maximum Tune. The game uh, has VR, which is a neat gimmick. It has a motion platform that's kind of neat, but because it's VR, it costs £2 to play instead of £1, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. Uh, that I think that's basically everything. Okay, back, back to the video. But yeah, it's cool stuff. And that's not even everything. The one other game they had, like video game, video game, uh, Jurassic Park Arcade, Raw Thrills. If you know Wilcox Arcade, uh, Dustin, the, he really likes that game. And I'd sort of heard good things and I was like, eh, forget it, it's, let's give it a go. It was actually, it was all right. I've not really dabbled much in the Raw Thrills shooters. I'm more familiar with their racing games, but yeah, it was pretty fun. It sort of has replay value. There were like secrets where it's like, oh, shoot this thing at the side and then get it. Or there's like, quick time events where it's like oh shoot these parts of the thing until you know to make sure you get through and it's it's just kind of fun little stuff and it it was it was an all right game i've heard that like uh with raw thrills and shooters they have like a thing where after like five minutes of gameplay they ramp up the difficulty to force you to continue i don't know i did sort of get that because i was playing and then i got like five minutes in and then i game overed because you know the difficulty suddenly sp spiked up but I don't know if that was the game doing it artificially or if it was just the level getting tougher. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I couldn't really comment because, you know, I didn't thoroughly test it. But if it is like that, that's not very good. <laughs> but, eh. One really cool thing, though. Uh, this is the only time, like, in recent memory I've seen a cab that actually has cheaper continue prices than it does start. Like, it was a pound to play, but it was only 50 pence to continue. And the game, like, properly advertised. It's like, whoa, half price, continue, whoa, 50 pence. And it's like... That's really cool. It's cool that the venue is like encouraging continuous play. And honestly, yeah, I would have kept playing, but you know, I had to. I was, I'd already spent all my other credits on a uh, Ultra Moto VR because you know, two pounds. So I, I couldn't. But yeah, it, it was fun stuff. I would totally play more of that game if you know local location got it. Heck yeah, I'd try and go on that leaderboard.
And also, uh, the cabinet, it's not like, like, at my, at my local Hollywood Bowl, they have Jurassic Park Arcade. At least they used to. I don't know if they still do. I know they have it at the Arcade Aylesbury as well. And, like, all those cabinets are, like, the smaller deluxe cabinets. Like, they're both deluxe. There's two different cabs. It's, like, deluxe and super deluxe. And, uh, like, all the other cabs I've seen and played on are, like, the deluxe ones, where it's, like, big and you sit in it and that's it. But this one was, like, super deluxe because you sat in it but then it had like a moving platform, which I do believe uh, Sega's old Lost World uh, Jurassic Park arcade game from like 97. I think that had a moving platform as well. Some other stuff, obviously. Uh, immediately Rail Chase 2 comes to mind that had a moving platform. But yeah, this game does that as well. And it's, yeah, it's kind of fun. Uh, just, you know, motion stuff, fan moving stuff. It, it's kind of fun. You know, it, it's, it is a bit of a novelty of a game, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it's fun. I Again, if it showed up in a local location of mine, I'd totally grind it out, play it a bunch, see if I can get a high score. But yeah, that, that's that's all the arcades there. Ipswich is a much smaller seaside place than like, you know, South End or Great Yarmouth or Blackpool because yeah, it's, it's smaller, so it has less arcades. I've already done a video on Great Yarmouth. You can go watch that. And I, I've already been to South End. Uh, I, I would go again and make a video, but don't know when I'm next going to be able to. And uh, I want to go to Blackpool. Really want to go up north and check out the stuff up there. But I haven't. But yeah, this place is, you know, I was already in the area. And so I was like, yeah, frig it. Why not? Let, let's see. Let's see what they got there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it was just kind of a little, little fun thing I figured I'd make. I'm just rambling at this point. Let's, let's not. Let's record the ending at the end. I'll do a video for the end and the start. There's a bunch of hair onto this wheel. I'm going to stop the recording now. Ah.